This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. Tasmanians will face more uncertainty if the result of Saturday's election is a hung parliament. The Greens are vowing to hit the Liberals with a no-confidence motion, unless it reveals the political donations made by the gaming industry. But the Premier is standing by his promise not to govern in minority, creating a constitutional dilemma if the election doesn't deliver a clear result. Five days to secure the message to voters. The Premier today in the Franklin electorate in the last dash across the state. A re-elected majority Liberal government will take our small business sector to the next level. But the looming election is prompting a threat from the Greens, a last minute attempt to force the Liberal Party to disclose how much the gaming industry is funding its campaign before polling day on Saturday. In the absence of those details we have to take a stand whether it's a majority or a minority Liberal government after the next election, we will move no confidence in the Liberals. The Greens claiming the Liberal Party moulded its poker machine policy for the industry by not tendering the monopoly licence for poker machines. The gambling industry said we want individual licences. The Liberal policy changed shortly thereafter. A $250 million windfall gain would be delivered to the gambling industry if the Liberals won. And our policy is, is entirely driven by what's in the best interest of, of the state. And I stand by our commitment to disclose all our donations in accordance with the law. The Labor Party wouldn't support such a stunt. We know that uh, what's really important is that we fight hard over the next five days uh, and talk to Tasmanians about the issues they want to be talking about. The threat means little unless Tasmanians return a hung parliament. If the Liberals were told to form minority government with less than 13 seats, it would be an early test of parliament support. Labor may feel after today's events that they couldn't support a Green one, but they would move one of their own and expect the Greens to support that. We've said that we won't be forming minority government. Now the question is to the Premier, what will he do uh, in the case of minority government? A question that may not need answering depending on Saturday's outcome. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. And with just days to go until Tasmanians head to the polls, tensions are high on the campaign trail. Both major parties were out today spruiking promises in an effort to further convince voters of their plan for our state's future. A seaside view kicking off the last week of the state election campaign and a welcomed vote of confidence from Federal Labor on the removal of pokies from pubs and clubs. Of course I support her. So you support the policy? Of course I support her. I support the policy for Tasmania that Rebecca White is putting forward at this election. Anthony Albanese all smiles as he spent time in the Braddon electorate promising $6 million for road upgrades. In partnership with $6 million from Tasmanian Labor to fix the most dangerous section of the Bass Highway near Sisters Hills. A deal the Liberal Party were quick to roadblock. Our commitment to the road, uh, the exact road that Rebecca White's talking about, is far greater, a $40 million commitment to 112 kilometres. Also committed from Federal Labor was $15 million for Cradle Mountain infrastructure, matching State Labor's promise. If we want to continue to maintain our reputation as a destination for people around the world to visit, we need to invest in the infrastructure to support that visitation. So buses at the moment aren't keeping up with the number of people that are visiting Cradle Mount. We need an alternative now. It might be a cableway, which we think is a, a wonderful and, and truly hero experience, but it might be an alternative transportation solution. But Will Hodgman was quick to slam the pledge, saying it's relying on not only a state election win, but also one nationally. The Liberals today announcing if re-elected, an advocate for small business will be appointed, aiming to bridge the gap between the sector and government. This is a wonderful opportunity for small business to grow, to work with government and uh, the local community. Jessica Moran, Southern Cross News. A father and son have been involved in a fatal motorbike crash in the Derwent Valley overnight. They were riding separate motorbikes on Black Hills Road away from New Norfolk. Police say the son crashed into a car that had reversed out of a driveway. The 36-year-old died at the scene. So at this stage, um, speed seems to be a contributing factor as well as we haven't discounted drugs or alcohol. The father and the driver of the car were not injured. 
A Launceston man who tried to evade police by jumping out of a hotel window has pleaded guilty to drug trafficking charges. The 29-year-old appeared in the Launceston Supreme Court this morning. Our reporter Tom Johnson has more. Appearing in the Supreme Court today, Kane Robert Richardson pleaded guilty to drug trafficking charges after police say they found him with methamphetamine and morphine in 2016. The court heard Mr Richardson was staying at the Clarion City Park Hotel when police arrived in a premeditated sting. When officers entered the room, the accused lifted the window and jumped out onto the car park below. It's understood Mr Richardson ran across Tamar Street and jumped through bushes near the Albert Hall Cafe. He was apprehended by police several minutes later. In sentencing, Mr Richardson's defence lawyer argued his client had a difficult upbringing and has now been involved in several rehabilitation programs. The judge did not hand down a sentence today, instead delaying his decision until late April. Wildlife rescuers say Tasmania is facing a crisis in the care of orphaned and injured animals. Ahead of the election, they're calling for more action to help recruit and train animal carers. Willow the Wombat has been under care at Bonnerong. The now 14-month-old was orphaned by a car crash and has been nursed to health. So Willow's a great example of, a, of a, an animal that needs care and shows the dedication that's needed. She's a wombat whose mum was hit by a car. Uh, so an animal like a wombat, you might be looking at two to two and a half years of care before they go back to the wild. Last year, Bonnerong fielded 7,500 similar calls, with a total of 1,500 needing ongoing care. Melissa has temporarily cared for around 100 animals over the last year and says it's devastating if animals can't be placed with a more permanent carer and have to be euthanised. Um, it happens quite a bit with animals that are in temporary care. Of course, it's uh, not what we would like um, to happen and we do try our best not to have to, to give them up if that's the case. There needs to be drives for more carers, simple as that. There are not enough carers with 300 registered carers in the state. That is nowhere near enough for uh, hundreds upon hundreds of orphaned animals every year. Wildlife advocates are calling for an overhaul of the system with a renewed focus on recruiting and properly training carers. 97% of the animals that we receive calls for are injured by people, either directly or indirectly. So that means we have a responsibility to do the best we can for these animals. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Students at a Tasmanian school are realising the power of technology, using everyday objects, including vegetables, to play Pac-Man as part of a team. The STEMX program has students at Invermay Primary School taking part in a hands-on workshop which teaches young people about science and technology in a fun and engaging way. For them to be hands-on and even for them to show me how they, they work is a real um, learning journey because the jobs of the future are STEM jobs and they're available for everybody. As part of the STEMX program, students will pitch an idea for a project which uses science to benefit the community as part of a national competition. Students at Glenorchy Primary School will have their turn to take part in the program later this week. OK, let's take a look at the day's business and finance with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. Australian shares have ended higher, with the benchmark index closing above 6,000 points for the first time since February 5. Supported by solid company results and rising bank stocks, the ASX 200 index has risen by 42.4 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 78.69 US cents and 63.85 Euro cents. He's one of the most talented footballers the state's produced in recent times. And today, North Melbourne star Ben Brown went back to where it all began with the Glenorchy Football Club, ensuring his legacy will continue long into the future. The towering Ford played two seasons with Glenorchy in 2011 and 12 before leaving the state to begin his AFL journey. His grandfather played 210 games with the club, even taking out its best and fairest. That was a massive thing for me when, when I was coming down south and it, it was really a no-brainer to pick Glenorchy but I'm really happy I did because you know they supported me so well when I was here and um, yeah, it's, it's always great to be back. Now a star of the AFL, the Pies have honoured his achievements by naming their new Development Academy program after him. Last year in our region, there wasn't one under 16 
junior team in the entire region, you know, and that spells trouble down the track. Created to give up-and-coming players better access to a high-performance environment, it's hoped the program helps develop the Ben Browns of the future with a focus on the under-14 to 16 age groups. If we've got that participation coming from all levels um, and, you know, people working on academies from all levels, I, I think that's a, that's a great start and, um, you know, I, I think it would be a really positive thing for footy and Tassie teaching them the same things we're teaching the TSL team. So as they come through the ranks, there's not their, their mind doesn't spin where they're like, oh my God, all these new ideas. Meantime, Brown's coach has thrown his support behind more AFL pre-season games being played at Kingston's Twin Ovals, with around 2,000 turning out to watch Saturday's JLT opening round clash between the Roos and the Dees. Scott full of praise for the ground, despite his side's 53-point loss. Yeah, it's, it's, if it's not the best surface in Australia, it's got to be very, very close to it. So. Um, all the powers of the B did a great job in getting the ground up, particularly given the conditions um, early in the morning. Tasmania looks likely to draw with New South Wales in its Sheffield Shield match after rain it continued to interrupt play on day three. But there's still been time for Bo Webster and Jake Doran to build up decent totals. Webster reached his first Shield ton for the season a short time ago. Over the wicket comes in this one, eked out through mid wicket. There it is, century number four for Bo Webster. He just settles for the single and almost a subdued celebration at first before clenching the fist and throwing the bat into light. The match wraps up tomorrow. Basketball now on the North West Thunder says it hopes to expand its fan base along the coast when it plays four home games in Devonport this season. The move is backed by the team star player Jeremiah Ingram, who senses big things to come following the side's first practice match on the weekend. A return to the original Thunderdome. The Devonport Recreation Centre will host four of the side's ten home games this season, including the marquee Round 2 clash against the Hobart Chargers. What we need to do is drive our, our supporter numbers and Devonport gives us a, a bit bigger venue to be able to do that. It's been ten years since the Thunder last played in Devonport. The arena can squeeze in 1,400 fans, whereas Ulverston is limited to 800. The court change will be a first for US-born Jeremiah Ingram. About to start his second season with the Thunder, the six foot seven forward says the team is starting to shape up well. We still have the same, you know, same fight, the same hunger that we had from last year. Um, we still have a few more pieces to add. The fire's still burning after that one point loss to Dandenong in last season's semi-final. Every night you're gonna, you know, it's gonna be a dog fight, so you got to wear your big boy pants when you come in and, um, and just expect a, a hard far ball game. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. Launceston mountain biker Alex Lack has been rewarded for his efforts over the past 12 months, taking out the under-23 mountain bike cross-country national championships in New South Wales. Lack was in second for most of the race before storming home in the final lap to claim victory for the Van Diemen cycling team. Uh, it's massive. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful for their support. Uh, wouldn't be possible without them. The win is the 20-year-old's first national title. Good evening. Fine and partly cloudy across the state today. Hobart and Launceston both reached a top of 23. It was 20 in Burnie and 21 in Devonport. Looking around the state, 22 was the top for Grove and Bushy Park. It was 20 in Wynyard, 19 in St Helens and Mariah Island and 16 in Liawini. Here the satellite shows a mostly cloud-free mainland with cumulus clouds scattered about coastal areas. Zooming in over Tasmania, scattered cloud over most of the state. Tomorrow, the high near Tasmania has weakened and moved southeast, cradling a low north of New Zealand. Coastal waters, north to northeasterly winds increasing to 20 to 30 knots about the east during the afternoon and evening. Swells to two metres in the west. And there is a strong wind warning from Wineglass Bay to Tasman Island. Looking at Hobart tomorrow, partly cloudy atop of 26, Adventure Bay and Taralea both partly cloudy also. Launceston, partly cloudy, 24 the top, Devonport and Bridport both 22. Burnie, partly cloudy, 22 the top, Strawn, partly cloudy and 26, and 23 for Marawar. St Helens, partly cloudy, 22, Swansea and Whitemark both partly cloudy also. And UV, very high, 9s and 10s. Looking ahead to Wednesday now, morning showers extending statewide with fresh and gusty winds. Thursday, showers about the west and south contracting to the southwest in the afternoon. And a fine day on Friday until some late showers develop about the north. 
A cloudy day for Perth tomorrow, showers for Brisbane and a sunny day with a top of 30 for Melbourne. And that's all from the news team for now. We'll see you a bit later with updates, but for the time being, good night.